People have known about the ability of electricity to affect the human body for thousands of years. As our ability to understand how the human body works has grown, so has the ability to use electricity to benefit our patients. In PT, we use electricity to accomplish one of these four goals. To facilitate tissue healing, to deliver medicine through the skin to the tissue beneath, to improve compromised neuromuscular function, and to help manage pain. So in this video we want to discuss the basics of electricity and how it affects human tissue. Electricity is the flow of electric particles from one location to another. When trying to get a better understanding it's helpful to compare the flow of electricity to the flow of water. With electricity we refer to the flow of charged particles as our current. We refer to the pressure that causes the flow of current as voltage. With electricity we have two main types of current, direct current or DC and alternating current or AC. With DC our charged particles only flow in one direction. With AC the direction of current flow flip-flops back and forth routinely. The most common example of DC current is the flow from a battery from one terminal to another. In contrast, alternating current is what we see coming from our wall outlet. AC current in the United States changes direction about 60 times a second. Depending on our therapeutic goal, we use both alternating current and direct current in physical therapy. To be able to effectively use e-stim, we need to know a little bit more about our electric current. Depending on our therapeutic goal, we'll change the waveform of our electric current in many different ways. As a clinician, you'll be responsible for choosing the appropriate parameters based on your goals. So let's define what some of these parameters mean. So here's a basic look at our alternating current on the left and direct current on the right. In both examples, our current flow is continuous. In some cases, it's beneficial to have breaks in our current flow. So instead of a continuous waveform, we use a pulsed waveform. Two of our more commonly adjusted parameters include frequency and amplitude. Frequency refers to the number of waves or the number of pulses in a second. Amplitude is defined as the height of the wave or the pulse. Amplitude is a direct reflection of the intensity of our e-stim. For those instances when we choose a pulsed waveform over a continuous, we will need to determine our pulse duration. The longer the pulse, the more current it carries. It's also important to understand how many pulses per second we have occurring. When using alternating current, we can choose to do monophasic or biphasic. With a monophasic current, we only allow electrons to flow in one direction, so it behaves like direct current. With biphasic, current flows both ways. If we have equal current flowing both directions, we refer to this as symmetric biphasic. Sometimes, however, it's beneficial to unbalance that current flow. We refer to this as asymmetric biphasic. The last two parameters we'd like to discuss are on and off time, and ramp up and ramp down time. Performing e-stem for muscle re-education is an example of when we would have on and off times. We wouldn't want a patient to have to contract their muscle for 10 minutes continuously. Therefore, we might choose to have the muscle contract for 10 seconds and rest for 20. Ramping means the amplitude is gradually increased or gradually decreased. This can help increase comfort for our patients as the e-stem turns on and off. So what's the result of putting that electricity into our body? There's two basic responses that allow us to achieve our therapeutic goals. First is the ability to depolarize nerves. This can be beneficial whether we're trying to re-educate muscle or manage pain. Second, we can use that electricity to influence molecules that have an electric charge. This includes cells that help with tissue healing. We can also use that direct current flow to push medication into the skin. Not every tissue in the human body will react the same way to electricity. Some structures such as nerves conduct electricity very well. Other tissues such as tendon and fat tend to have a higher impedance or a higher resistance to the flow of electricity. Based on the parameters we choose, we have the ability to target specific types of nerves. If our goal is to affect muscle tone, we'll want to focus on our A-alpha fibers. If our goal is pain management, we'll choose to try and focus on our A-beta or A-gamma fibers. The reason we have the ability to target specific types of nerves is based on our strength duration curve. 
Our vertical axis represents our current strength and our horizontal axis represents our pulse duration. By choosing a waveform with a shorter pulse duration, we are more likely to stimulate our A beta sensory fibers than our A alpha motor fibers. By choosing a longer pulse duration, we'll have an improved ability to affect our alpha motor neurons. It's important to understand that by increasing pulse duration and increasing intensity, we're applying more electricity to our patient. The more current we apply, the greater the chance we might do some tissue damage. Therefore, it's always important to balance our pulse duration and intensities. If we're trying to facilitate tissue healing or reduce swelling, it's helpful to use electric current that has electrons flowing in one direction. This one directional current flow can have a positive impact on some of our cellular processes. As current flows in one direction, we get a response referred to as electrotaxis. It is defined as the movement of biological cells in response to an electric field. So as the current is turned on, cells with an opposite charge will be attracted towards the electrodes. While there are positive effects to this ion flow, there are also some potential downfalls. As these molecules migrate towards the electrodes, we can change the pH of the tissue nearby. This can result in some skin irritation and or possibly damage. Another way the body responds to e-stim is by accommodation. This is the ability of the body to adjust the threshold required to trigger an action potential, either higher or lower, in response to stimuli. A good example of this phenomenon occurs when we choose to wear a hat. When we first put on a hat, we can feel the pressure. But after a short time wearing it, our nervous system is accommodated and we no longer feel the pressure from the hat. With e stim, it's not unusual to have to adjust the intensity slightly higher after the body accommodates to the original stimulus. The most important aspect with any PT intervention is knowing when it shouldn't be done. Here is our list of contraindications for electrical stimulation. Before you choose to apply e stim to any patient, make sure you screen them properly to ensure that there are no contraindications present. Here are some precautions for your use of e-STEM. In the presence of any precaution, be sure to use good clinical reasoning before deciding to follow through and apply electrical stimulation to this patient. Lastly, in our introduction, let's talk about the equipment used to deliver electrical stimulation. Our e-STEM unit consists of a control unit, lead wires, and electrodes. The control unit allows us to adjust all of the parameters we previously discussed to ensure that we're meeting our clinical goals. The electrical current gets to our patient through the application of electrodes. There's a size and shape for almost any application required. When it comes to electrode size, it's very important to understand that the smaller the electrode, the higher the current density and the more potential for injury. With larger electrodes, that current gets spread out over a larger area. Typically, larger electrodes are more comfortable for a patient. Sometimes our e-stim treatment is more effective when we have focus current under a smaller pad, and there are some times when a larger pad is more effective for our treatment goal. Finally, we have our lead wires, which carry our current from the control unit to the electrodes. To complete the electrical stimulation circuit, we're going to need two electrodes and two wires. Leads are usually color-coded. The standard is to use red for positive and black for negative. However, that might not be the case always. For symmetric biphasic currents, it doesn't matter which one is plus and which one is minus. But when using direct current or unbalanced AC current, knowing where to put the positive and the negative electrodes is extremely important. With this video, we've introduced you to the basics of electricity and electrical stimulation. In physical therapy, we use e-stim to facilitate tissue healing, deliver medications, rehabilitate muscles, and manage pain. For more information on how to apply electrical stimulation for each of these clinical goals, please refer to the specific videos found in our video resource library.